I took a couple days to make this video because I hoped that I would find the fun somewhere in Solstice of Heroes. Now, this isn't out of any act of protest against actions by Bungie the studio. We can't control those. The best thing you can do is to just not spend your money on silver if you feel that this game is not going in the direction you like. And as I said at the end of my last year's Solstice of Heroes review, Remember everybody, vote with your wallets. The same principle applies, because as I was writing this thing, I realized that my Solstice of Heroes video from last year and my Solstice of Heroes video from this year are nearly one-to-one -one identical recreations of each other to the point where I'm re-recording the vast majority of this video just so I can mention that fact so I don't plagiarize myself intentionally or unintentionally. The Solstice Heroes event, and more often than not, every single Destiny seasonal event hasn't evolved. There's been no evolution. It's just been straight stagnation ever since the revelry was removed and replaced with Soul System Heroes. Just to go over the actual gameplay loop of Solstice Heroes again, it's just Bonfire Bash. That's it. That's the entire thing. If you played last year, if you played the year before, if you played the year before that, because there have been three years of Bonfire Bash, you have experienced this event. The actual event itself is a one-to-one -one creation of last year. They literally took the game mode and dropped it in. They redid the environment a teeny tiny bit. They added some new enemy rotations in the way that they spawn like the actual enemy generation and density, but even at that, it, that's not significant. You can throw that into a randomizer and have that be done in an afternoon. The point is, it's pointless to talk about Bonfire Bash. I'm just going to assume you know already. So I'm going to talk about the things that are actually different than last year, starting off with the bounty system, the way that you progress through Solstice Heroes and get the equipment that you so deserve. Whenever you first talk to Evil Avante, you get a Solstice Forge, a Seasonal Forge. At first, you only have two options available to you, and eventually, when you complete the first step of the Solstice of Heroes quest, you have access to dedicated bounties. There are three tiers of bounties, green, blue, and purple. The purple ones being the most efficient for earning your armor specific alloys, in which case, gauntlet alloys, helmet alloys, you get the point. Completing 100 alloys worth of of bounties whether that be two purple ones or half a dozen green ones or even a couple blue ones however order you want to get to 100 once you get to 100 you will be able to redeem those for your choice at a specific tailored loot drop in which case you just play another bonfire bash and then you get that loot drop guaranteed you have to do this five times minimum to unlock all the armor and then after that you have to do additional quests to unlock this year's solstice glow now i like this year's solstice glow i think it's okay i think it's a neat little twist on how they've traditionally done it in the past um i like it i think it's cool i think it's being over hated this year for reasons not gameplay related but besides that you earn silver leaves by playing bonfire bash and leveling up and besides that there is nothing more i have to say about the solstice of heroes it is dead it is boring and it is an entirely played out trope in the destiny world that i wish so wish that they would abandon in favor for a different seasonal activity cough cough the revelry now we actually have to talk about some guns because there is one new bow being added to the Solstice of Heroes, an abomination that is a cross between a biting nail and a whispering slab. They just said, hey, let's get a lightweight bow and let's get the slab model. We'll put it together and we'll make a seasonal bow. We're going to talk about all the weapons and the weapons from this event that have had perk refreshes because some of them are actually pretty good, whereas in years past, the loot pool from Solstice of Heroes have been underwhelming because of bad perks. First things first, crowning duel suffers from the fact that it's a precision frame rocket launcher precision frames aren't they're, they're your casual best friend there it really is never a good reason to be using a precision frame compared to adaptive or an aggressive frame rocket launcher something like apex predator alone clears crowning dual logue but if we're actually looking at crowning dual logue we have a couple options obviously best in slot impact casing impact casing is always going to be your best friend because you are always going to be hitting impact direct impacts with this thing because it walks on to targets. Moving on to your perk column three. Perk column three has a couple of interesting things. I sleep on impulse amplifier. I know I'm not going to seriously suggest the impulse amplifier is a good option, but as a PVP rocket launcher that has auto tracking, you could 
do some a little bit of work with impulse amplifier and something like bipod um or something like cluster bombs i mean really you fire your rockets fast it gets to the target it blows up impulse amplifier auto tracking and pack casing you can't go wrong with this for crucible if you are using this for pve purposes you're either choosing auto loading or you're choosing reconstruction i just see the utility in reconstruction compared to auto and holster because it's just two two rockets in the magazine for no extra cost unlike bipod whereas bipod decreases the blast radius decreases the damage and decreases the reload speed reload speed is not really a problem with reconstruction but you're already losing a lot of stats with bipod so it's not really worth it if you're going to consider a perk in the fourth column you can choose one option pretty much your only damage option bait and switch bait and switch it's easier than ever to activate gives you free damage you have reconstruction to get your extra rocket you have bait and switch this roll is good for some damage rotations i can see this being good on builds with euphemy on weeks with strand surge or any activities that have a lot of strand damage uh, you're getting your rotation off with euphemy plus the bait and switch reconstruction this is the role i'm going for this is why i think most people are going to be happy with now compass rose I am a big Compass Rose hater. It's a little bit better this year. It's a precision frame shotgun. So stats are deceiving compared to its damage model. However, you're taking slide shot per column one and in per column two, opening shot. That's it. If using this for Crucible, you have no reason not to do it with max range. Activate slide shot, you get your max range, nearly max range, as to say. If you're managing to get a good barrel corkscrew Rifled barrel, maybe. If you can deal with having the no handling, you can get max range. Opening shot gives you max range anyway. Even if you have something like corkscrew rifling, it's a good roll. Only for the first shot. In Crucible, precision frames aren't the best. Moving on to something old. Something new. I like the idea of something new. It's a 120. It got a little bit of a stat bump to compete with other 120s, Cough, Cough, Igneous, Hammer. Even at that, it's not a lot going on for it. it. Suffers from having bad perks. I know the one everybody who has a mind built for PvP, and here's Igneous Hammer. Everybody's thinking about Frenzy. No, 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 I'm just messing around. Um, I like a couple of rolls on this weapon. Precision Instrument, for starters, Precision Instrument is still a good perk uh the damage profile the actual time to kill if you're getting a lot of shots in between two targets with precision instrument you can get this all the way down to a two tap with the 25 percent increased crit damage but that takes a lot of effort precision instrument is really just a consistency tool more than it is a damage tool to two tap it's just so you can get your three taps from longer ranges that's the real point of something like precision instrument with those marginal five percent four percent damage increases at a time beating frenzy explosive payload rapid hit explosive payload i don't think snapshot's good elemental capacitor is really only going to be useful if you're playing with an arc super arc supers are very good right now especially on hunter so 80 handling based i can see explosive payload sorry elemental capacitor precision instrument being a good role for the future I like it. This is my preferred role if you're using an ARC subclass. If you aren't using an ARC subclass, I like Rapid Hit. When we got to Fortunate Star, I'm not a bow person. I have been told by bow people that this thing is okay. It's not really better than other combat bows. You're using it as a secondary slot. In slot, I really don't know much about bows, so I, I'm not aware of any better competition. So excuse me for my lack of knowledge on the subject. I'm not going to pretend to know much about bows because I am not a bow person. In any case, it does have good bow perks. They brought back Archer's Gambit and put it on this bow. Get an increased fire rate whenever you're hip firing and precision firing. Combining it with something like successful warm up. You know, you get your draw time down by a lot. Archer's Tempo. You get your draw, your draw time down a little bit less. Um, Archer's Tempo is the passive. Successful warm-up is the active version, so successful warm-up is going to work better. 
If fire grip on bows is always an elite option, considering the play style with bows, you're going to be hip firing them more than anything, really. But besides that, yeah, it's a bow. That's uh, that's all I can say on that matter. It is just a bow. Finally, just to show it off briefly, there is a new memento. This is the memento um, on the age-old bond. You can't really see it a lot because of the way the keratin or the ahamkara scale works on something like commemoration where more of the gun is changed looks a little bit better i am not a fan of it that's all i can say i'm not a fan of this memento i'm not going to be stalking these like you would with others all right everyone that's pretty much it um the Solstice of Heroes is a tired event. I'm tired of the standard seasonal model of event telling. Uh, I wish we had something new. Bring back the SRO. Bring back the Revelry. Bring back the February event. The February event, the Valentine's Day one. Man, I can't think of the names of it right now. It's uh, Crimson Days. Bring back Crimson Days. Not that I can actually remember the name of it. Do better. I want this game to be better. I want the events to be better. I wish that Bungie had more time, money, dedicated staff to make these events better. I am not going to be spending another dime on this game until these events are changed. I won't be buying the season passes. I won't be buying the event passes. I should say I won't be buying the event passes for these events. I don't think it's worth your money. Play it for free. Max it out. Get your title. Get stockpiled the rolls you want on these guns. And then go play a different game to prove a point. Remember... As much as you can vote with your wallet, you can also vote with your playtime. Besides that, I have nothing else to say. Sorry if I'm being a Debbie Downer. Destiny just isn't in a good spot in my head right now. I love Baldur's Gate, though. Baldur's Gate's good. So, uh, yeah. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about the Solstice Heroes. Leave a like if you haven't. Subscribe if you haven't. And remember, have a great day, everyone. Take care now.